two things. Firstly, if your supermarket shelves are running bare of fresh vegetables and green stuff to supplement your meals, keep watching. Secondly, if you want to make the most of the, the precious time that you are getting outdoors at the moment and you want to maximise that time and get maximum value from it, then keep watching. Basically, keep watching. Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and if you're new to this channel and want to improve your bushcraft skills in a simple, no-nonsense way, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Cheers. It is the end of March 2020, so it seems like as good a time as any for me to cast my mind back over the previous month, specific, specifically, specifically in relation to this video series that I've put together on the Foragers calendar. Just a quick recap, this is a great book and it tells you what plants, trees, things you could be looking for to forage, to consume at various different months of the year throughout the year, particularly for the British Isles, although I imagine there is also some application of this in other areas of the world as well. I, at the end of this video, I'm going to link to the playlist that contains the January and February videos in this series, but for now, let's take a closer look at March. It's a great book. It breaks down what we should be seeing and what we could expect to see because remember, Mother Nature doesn't necessarily run to a rigid timetable. So in March, it's advising that we could expect to see Alexander's, common sorrel, corn salad, cow parsley, dandelion leaves, primrose and cowslip, rock samphire, seal kale, the new shoots, silver birch, stinging nettle, and wild garlic. There's also a larger list that you're seeing on screen at the moment that talks about those species that might not be prime at the moment but depending on you know the weather conditions and how things are going that year they could also be visible and present so i've gone out these previous four weeks when i've been able to and i've looked for those you know all of those species and uh, i've looked for them collectively and I've been able to identify those that you're going to see in the rest of this video. What's been really interesting, but completely unsurprising, is if I compare the list of plant species that I'm expected to find or could find in March to February and to January, it is, unsurprisingly, a larger list. It's warmer, it's potentially drier. You know, spring is springing. Those plants and, and, and things that we can consume and forage and use are, are, are springing into life. So I'm trying not to read too far ahead in this book. In fact, I'm not reading ahead in this book. I'm reading one month at a time, but it'd be interesting to see how that list grows in April, May, through into early summer, summer and out the other end. I'm expecting to see it peak and then decline again. I'm wishing some other things that I was seeing in the news at the moment were peaking and declining again, but I certainly expect that to be the case in terms of forageable species um, in this book throughout the remainder of this year. So let's have a look, let's have a, have a think about what I've discovered so far this month, or sorry, so far in March, and what I've done with it. An easy win for me were the dandelion leaves, you know, in my area, even though I live in a, in a semi-rural slash semi-suburban area, I'm not too far from farmers' fields and tracks and bridleways. I'm sat in a beautiful little wood copse now that's about a six minute walk from my house. That's why I'm here at the moment. I've not driven to get here, I've just, I've, I've popped into here as part of my daily exercise allowance. So no shortage of dandelion leaves. I've not done anything with them at the moment because to be honest where I've seen them so far are where dog walkers frequent. So <laughs> for, for obvious health reasons um, and, 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 um, and taste reasons I've not consumed any yet but really really simple to find so far. Dandelion leaves, if you can find them, if you can be, be, be certain that they are relatively contaminant free then why not forage some Take them back home, get onto Google and look up for some recipes as to what you can do with dandelion leaves. I've also found, again, very unsurprisingly, lots of young, fresh stinging nettles as well. Again, 
easy to identify. If you're not sure, just stick your hand in, wave it about. You'll find out pretty quickly whether they're uh, stinging nettles, urtica diochia. Not done anything with them yet. I am planning to do something with them this coming weekend, but I wanted to get this video out um, before we got too far into April. So if you've got a really good, clean, fresh, young patch of stinging nettles in your area, get out there, forge yourself a good couple of handfuls of the fresh Whoops, my, my gimbal took a little bit of a stumble then it became unbalanced. Where was I? Grab yourself a, a couple of handfuls, a decent few handfuls of the young fresh leaves at the top of the stalks. Take them home, Google what you can do with them. You will be surprised. And from a health perspective, they are packing the macronutrients in them. Incredibly um, heavy, incredibly dense in terms of macronutrients. And they're commonly perceived as a weed. Last month, my forage of the month was primrose, primula vulgaris. Very few of them were actually in flower. They were just starting to burst. This month, fast forward 30 days or so, lots of them in flower. I'm able to spot them at a distance now because of the bright yellow flowers rather than discovering them when I'm on top of them. So I'm going to link to a video in the top right hand corner of your screen now, linking you back to February's video where I do my my very honest taste test on primrose, primula vulgaris. And finally then, let's finish off with something that I've actually done something with. Um, I don't have wild garlic or ramsons growing close to me at all. Trust me, I've tried looking, just haven't been able to discover them. However, there is um, a forestry commission forest not far from me that I often, you know, we often walk around. And just before the lockdown came in, we went there and there is a patch growing, same place every single year, regular as clockwork, and there they were. They hadn't burst into flower at that point, as you see in the video. Now they were still just those, those lush, beautiful green leaves. They were growing or growing amongst them was some Arum maculatum or Lords or La Lords and Ladies. Very, very toxic and um, could do a great deal of damage. So if you're gonna go out looking for these wild garlic, these ramsons, then be absolutely 100% certain that what you are picking are wild ramsons, wild garlic, and not anything that might be growing in between them. Took some great handfuls of those, took those home, chopped them up, uh, and Mrs. T made a, a wonderful uh, pesto and pasta sauce with them and, um, and very nice it was too. Again, any of these plant species that I've mentioned, in particular the um, stinging nettle, the dandelion leaves and the wild garlic, once you've positively identified it, and remember, if you're in any doubt, don't pick it, don't touch it. If you're in any doubt, just leave it alone, go home and raid the cupboards. But if you're feeling adventurous and confident that's the key thing adventurous and confident you're 100 percent certain grab yourself some take them home research them you will be surprised i guarantee you just how healthy some of these these weeds are that we are surrounded by in terms of the vitamin c and other macronutrients within them and if you're lucky enough to find yourself some wild garlic some rams ramsons then um, you know don't tell anybody else and uh, uh, you know carefully uh, and with respect to the amount that is there forge yourself some you will not regret it i can assure you so that is march's forage let me just show the forager's calendar for march ticked off i'm sure i've walked past absolutely stacks of other species that are listed in march and probably february and january and just not been able to identify them my eyes have been honing in on the things that i recognize and can identify the challenge then is what do i do with them how do i consume them how do i prepare them i imagine as i become more confident with this maybe next year when i start rereading this book again then i might start to be more adventurous and try to identify things that are um, not as as easily recognizable by myself but for now that's what we went for this month dandelion leaves nettles and that beautiful and, and, and very, very tasty wild garlic ramsons, um, Allium ursinum, I believe is the scientific name. If you're interested in finding out more about this foraging that I've been doing over the past few months, there's a video appearing 
up on the screen. Now, why not click that and refresh yourselves, refresh, refresh yourselves at what I looked at back in February and in January. And if you're not yet a subscriber, you know what to do by now. You've got time on your hands, right? So why not binge watch my YouTube video as well as Netflix? Take care.